Good afternoon, everyone. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of July. Let's take a look at this market here. We had a uh, short session, and we did finish with a small gain for the S&P 500, up seven pennies here. The market is in the range, and really, until we break below that 159.5 to 160 level we've been observing, or we can get back above 162.5-ish, that will get us above this 50-day moving average, which is actually at about 162.65. Um, until we can do that, we're kind of just stuck in this little range here, and you're better off trading uh, for day trades or just observing uh, individual stocks where there might be a good setup and most of the good setups have been on the long side still the last couple weeks so uh, we're undergoing potential distribution as we know we've been talking about that the last five days we see right here we're gonna have that five-day moving average if we uh, are right here it's gonna start flattening out because we're getting rid of this information from uh, five days ago we're gonna start getting rid of that information and then we will uh, uh, begin to decline if this market uh, does decline a little bit. So that means that we ha potentially have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows with a flattening five-day moving average. Well, we do have that, but what we have the potential for then would be a break of that 159.5, 160, and that would likely bring about the uh, a, a test at, down near about 153. We do have um, the jobs number on Friday, so uh, if, you, if there's going to be a move, I think it's going to Unfortunately, a lot of it be due to a gap on Friday, and there's just nothing you can do about that. I consider it noise, just something we have to tolerate uh, the jobs number and let it settle down and let the market reveal to us what's next after that. The NASDAQ was up 29 cents, and it's kind of in the same position where we see that you know this prior support area is, is, is acting as resistance for now, and we'd really like to see it back above 72 and a half-ish or so. Uh, to, to get this market to maybe have a little bit of conviction. Otherwise, uh, we're still just kind of uh, neutral. But uh, we, you know, we've got uh, a rising five-day moving average that has acted as support in the NASDAQ. But it's just really tough to have any conviction when you have a daily chart that looks like this, this one does. Um, again, our more important level, probably down near about $71 a share. Russell 2000 was up uh, to 20 cents here as it found support at the rising five-day moving average. And that's uh, what we would expect to see most times that uh, we do get a bounce from that rising five-day moving average and 97 is still the important level in there so if we're gonna see a pattern of lower highs and lower lows reveal it wouldn't really be troublesome until we got back below about that 96 and a half 97 level the Russell is really in a lot healthier shape than uh, the S&P 500 semiconductors were up 24 cents today and they are right at the uh, two-thirds retracement level they're testing that area and continue to test it, that is. So we're going to see this uh, five-day moving average really flatten out as well uh, on Friday because we're going get, to be getting rid of this data, whereas prior we were getting, you know, the last three days we've been getting rid of uh, this lower data. That's why we've had that advancing, that slope uh, higher in the semiconductors. But we're at this bigger level still, 37 and a half, 38, and if the market can't uh, clear that with conviction, then it's possible, uh, only possible, that we would uh, get a uh, pullback. But it just doesn't seem like it's ready yet unless we get a big... Uh uh, move off the jobs number and then really it's uh, there's not a lot you can do about it because it will have occurred through a gap the financials were uh, down six pennies today they are below the five-day moving average and near term we're gonna uh, keep a close eye on this uh, 1930, uh, 1925 to 1935. Really, uh, that's going to be a key area. We're going to get rid of this data on Friday. So we'll be starting to see this five-day moving average head lower. Be, keep in mind, too, the five-day moving average, if you're looking at a daily chart, is going to be a lot different than what you see on the intraday time frame. The intraday time frame is going to be a lot more accurate because it takes the number uh, of minutes, actually, over five full days, uh, whereas today we only only traded for half a day here. So a five-day moving average is going to give equal weight to this uh, shortened session. So it's going to be missing three hours, which could be very important hours. So the five-day intraday is much more important. If you're unfamiliar with that, uh, then go to the favorite post and uh, take a look at, uh, there's a couple of uh, videos there under education. The first one is a common question. And here, let me just pull it over because I just pulled it up. But this is on the... Um, what page is this? The the uh, oh favorite post right here. So this favorite post, if you go down to education, 
five-day moving average on different time frames. And uh, let's take one look at Apple. It was up $2.31 here today, so it's still bouncing uh, and potentially, you know, getting up into that uh, uh, the levels that we were talking about, which included the uh, volume weighted average price of that most recent move at 424, and also so that's from from here forward. And we also had this level, and if we take a look at the Fibonacci levels off of this uh, movement, we are currently just at about a 50% retracement. So it would make sense to see this uh, this uh, bounce in Apple uh, begin to slow down and perhaps turn back lower. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be a big edge in there unless you're day trading. And even today, I mean, there was a nice move. Uh, to the long side as it got back above this consolidation area and it, it beat these little highs with these it had these higher lows and then a nice move higher with a uh, lower volume consolidation and a couple thrusts up. Um, so anyways, again, probably best left for day trades and Friday uh, I think is going to be possibly a, a, a frustrating day to trade because we have the jobs number. Uh, that will get digested into the market the first hour and a half and then a lot of people are going to not care uh, about the market as a lot of people are on vacation, but I think they'll check in to kind of see how things respond to the jobs number. I will have a video later today for gold and silver members uh, with the uh, with some trading ideas, but I'm going to run out and do some stuff first. So look for that later this afternoon. And uh, happy Fourth to everyone. Hope it's a uh, fun and safe uh, holiday for you. Thanks.